Hello and welcome to Code Nacho. Today we're going to be talking about why Drupal. This is the first episode of the series of courses that is going to teach you how to get started with Drupal, create your own content from site developer, front end developer, and back end developer. But before we get started, let's begin. Why Drupal? Now, in order to understand why Drupal, first of all, we have to understand what is Drupal. So the first thing to know is Drupal is a free open source content management framework that can be customized and it's suitable for developing simple websites and complex web applications. Basically, Drupal grows as you grow. So, and the key point in here is framework. It allows you to give, it basically allows you to create hooks and have this modular system in order to create your own API integrations, in order to have a content rich experience where you're able to have field APIs added into your own custom made uh, post or post types if you're actually coming from WordPress. So why Drupal is important because like it has, it, like I said, it allows you to create, build complex and like, you know, content rich websites. It has a strong developer community. So you're able to ask questions. You all with, you all will always find documentation based on what you're looking for and has this nice structure, model architecture and flexibility. Uh, Drupal is built on top of uh, Symfony, which has a very robust um, architecture as well. It's technically kind of like a project for Symfony, but it allows you to have, it has so much more because the Drupal API gives you the flexibility to do easy integrations and still have that scalability there. Now, let's see the pros. Like the pros of Drupal is like they're highly flexible, it's a scalable, it's secure. Uh, modular means that you have able to create not, not only have modules that are already built for you, but also create your own custom made solutions. And also it has multi, multilingual, uh, multilingual uh, right from the get go. And that's something that it's going to be very, uh, very important if you want to build something at enterprise level that is going to be uh, showcased to it, you know, the whole world. So let's talk about also the cons. Now, one of the main cons of Drupal is a steep learning curve. Uh, it's very, and I'm not gonna lie, it's quite, it's quite extensive to learn or understand the complexity of Drupal, and it has a very steep learning curve. Uh, but one of the things is that the cool thing about this is like once you had that learning curve, you were able to have a nice breeze on creating your own modular systems. We'll be talking about projects. We'll be doing projects, sample projects, like making a restaurant, making a blog. If you try to make a portfolio, it will teach you how to create not only a portfolio if you're a developer uh, on your local host and after that export it and set a static site, but it will actually help you to create a very stab stable uh, solution in order to keep all your content in one place. Uh, also, like one of the other things that it's a uh, hosting, it's quite hard to find one way to host your own Drupal solutions, but we're going to be talking about a solution here based on SiteGround and also other type of like solutions for DigitalOcean and AWS. We're going to be installing a sample uh, website so for you to get started. Uh, it has an it's overkill for basic needs. That's one of the things that it's basically told. Um, if you're just planning to make a simple blog and just want to put content and you don't put content every single day, maybe something, a solution, an easier solution like WordPress would be a better solution, a nicer solution if you don't have the time or even the interest of growing that site. Um, that's why it says people people say like it's basically that just you know, it's an overkill for something that's so simple. Uh, but one of the beautiful things about Drupal is that it allows you for extensibility right from the start. Uh, so we'll talk about what a basic need is because Basic need for somebody who is maybe just um, uh, maybe somebody who's right out of high school and wants to make a blog. Um, they have a basic need of just a site, some content, and I have to create some stuff. But if you're a developer or if you want to create a blog for your organization, or even if you're that high school kid who's going to graduate and wants to create something bigger, then this is an opportunity for you to get started with an enterprise level right from the get go. We're going to be working with site development and we're going to be working from uh, team development and custom modules so you can get started there. Uh, another thing that it's a very thing that that's another top con that people said is that they have fewer themes that uh, WordPress. Uh, now, WordPress has a very interesting structure. I'm not going to adhere to trash talk WordPress. I think it's a wonderful uh, tool if you are used to it. But one of the beautiful things about Drupal is that it allows you flexibility 
to create your own as well. It has a very nice layer structure. And even if you're not into creating a theme based on Twig, you can also use it to have a headless type of solution, which is something that we're going to be planning to do in this course. Um, it's going to be a long course. It's going to be a long haul, but uh, I think it's going to be worth it for you when it comes to like creating your own solutions. Now, now here's a very uh, great explanation of what they call about the Drupal people popular CMS of uh, the Drupal curve. Uh, but once you go in there, like you have that steep curve, but once you head there, um, once you pass that steep curve, you're able to create really amazing solutions. Now, in Drupal, we have an expression called, there's a module for that. Let's, for example, in WordPress you have, and I'm gonna compare this with WordPress because it's one of the most popular solutions. But uh, let's say, for example, you have advanced custom fields and advanced custom fields allow you to create these fields API in order to have, um, to hook to either post or your custom post. Uh, well, we have the fields API in Drupal right from the get-go. It's not a premium module. It's basically something that you just download or even actually fields API comes from core. It's built on top of that. It has that extensible, flexible um, field API solution that you can just kind of like hook into those content API, content posts. Uh, say you need an image, you can hook that image in there or you can have multiple images that need to be displayed. It, con it creates kind of a bucket that you're able to put extra data and you can say like this bucket holds this type of data there, but it's not limited to this. It can be added, you can add more stuff. Uh, WP forms, you wanna have forms, forms are important if you wanna have feedback from your users. So we have web forms, which is the same thing in order to have like custom, it has a nice custom UI. You can actually have uh, some protection from spam as well included with that. Uh, there's also protection security like Honeypot, um, that is included also within Drupal. There's a module for that as well if you want to have some extra protection there. But web forms have a very flexible structure there. Uh, you can hook it to an API. You can hook it to, um, you can you can have some feedback of multiple steps. You have a nice UI. We'll be talking about that later of what you can do with web forms and how you can extend them. Uh, also, we have uh, a query. If you are used to WordPress um, or you're more like a developer for WordPress site, then you understand what the loop is. It's basically just uh, a call, a query that you create on a WordPress with the WordPress API, and you have all of these nice post solutions being dragged from to the page. Uh, it works when it comes to you know creating your own post. It works when it creates your own like custom types, and you have a nice list of those things. But in Drupal, we have something called views. And Views is part of Core as well. And the, the difference is that we have a nice UI uh, in order to showcase all of the loading content in there. Uh, we can filter them. We can have some extra complexity uh, uh, queries that complex queries that say only show this for this person. There's a role permission level that you can add that it's also within Core. And that is something that it's really, really amazing there. For custom posts, same thing. We have entities, entities that basically call everything within a bucket as well, kind of like it goes tie hand in hand with a fields API. And finally, we have like if you compare it with a page builder, I want I like a page builder. When we have something called layout builder in Drupal, that it's also part of core uh, that you're able to create pages and have these templates that basically you are able to create multiple pages similar to a simple page based on a layout builder. Now, there's also like a module for that if you want to keep something similar to uh, Elementor or if you want to create something that we have, maybe editors like Mercury that are able to create some really nice page builders. Now, for uh, um, this section, there's going to be um, no experience required for Drupal. Uh, there's going to be maybe a little bit of code uh, because there's some stuff that I have to admit, that's the that's one of the weakest points of Drupal. Too. You don't have that one click, uh, it's all solution. Uh, but we do have explanations on how to create that part. And I think this is one of the main hurdles when it comes to getting started with Drupal. But once you get started with this, and if you plan to become a, a real software engineer, if you want to put your content out there, a portfolio out there, I think it's going to be a, it's going to be a valid solution for you. Very valuable. Uh, since it's not going to, it's going to teach you not only how to install Drupal, but every other type of solution as well.
Now for the goal for this section is going to be getting you an environment. Uh, we're going to start working with the basic ones, which is just using LAMP, which is Linux, um, Apache, MySQL, and PHP. Get you started with that one. Um, then uh, we're going to work. We're going to work with either a Docker solution if you want to have something more local. Uh, my choice is going to be working if you want to work locally. Uh, it's going to be using DDAP. And finally, we're going to go with uh, some push production when it comes to like DigitalOcean and SiteGround. So you can get your old Drupal site started if you don't want to have that locally as well. Now for this task, uh, we're going to have to do um, review some um, CLI commands, which is command line interfaces called Composer and Drush, and also like uh, get you started with uh, maybe VS Code as well. It's going to be our solution editor since that's one of the most popular one. And uh, yeah, so let's begin. Um, let's begin with this talk. I mean, that's something that is going to be very, very, I'm mean, very excited to see that. If you have any questions on Drupal, or if it's something that's not clear, please leave a comment. I, I really appreciate also if you leave a like and subscribe. That is something that is going to be uh, very important. It's something that's very important for me. And also like keeps you like to encourage it in order to keep doing these videos for you. So thank you very much, and Renato, and you've seen Code Nacho, and I'll see you on the next episode. Have a great day.